بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دس از می ڈاکٹر جہانگیر اینڈ یو آر واچنگ می آن مائی یوٹیوب چینل دیٹ از ڈاکٹر جہانگیر خان ویل ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس این ادر ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک دیٹ از ٹریٹمنٹ آف ٹائپ ٹو ریسپریٹری فیلیئر ویل آئی ہیو اپلوڈیڈ ٹو ویڈیوز آن مائی چینل ون از ریگارڈنگ دا ریسپریٹری فیلیئر وٹ از اٹس ڈیفینیشن وٹ از اٹس کرائٹیریا ہاؤ یو ڈیوائڈ اٹ then i discussed about uh, type 1 respiratory failure what is its mechanism uh, how weak your mismatch causes type 1 respiratory failure uh, its differential diagnosis and treatment then after that uh, in the second video i discussed about the type 2 respiratory failure what are the causes and what is mechanism today we are going to discuss about the treatment of type 2 respiratory failure now we categ- categorize or divide it into two phases one is of course we know that the type 2 respiratory failure is defined as increase in a co2 increase in a co2 along with decrease in oxygen that criteria i discussed in the previous video not only increase in co2 is not type 2 respiratory failure if the oxygen is normal and the co2 is raised then th- we will discuss hydrogenic hypercapnia or isolated hypercapnia that is something else so we are having we uh, divide the treatment of type 2 failure into two phases one is wash out the co2 wash out the co2 and the second is treat the underlying cause now this is very important treat underlying cause now what is meant by treat the underlying cause what are the causes we have discussed in the previous video the link i will share in the description below we are having a central causes and peripheral causes then uh, peripheral causes uh, are further divided into inside the lung and outside the lung now how would you wash out the co2 you are having a two option one is the bipap the other is ventilator of course there are criteria when will you apply bipap and when will you shift into mechanical ventilation for that you have to watch my video on bipap where i have uploaded almost 6 videos what is cpap cpap helps in type 1 respiratory failure what is bi- bipap bipap helps in type 2 respiratory failure what are its mechanism indication how it helps to wash out the co2 uploaded the videos on that in detail <coughs> but i will briefly mention over here that the how does the bipap wash out the co2 <coughs> it increases the tidal volume it increases the tidal volume and increases the minute ventilation so if it increases the minute ventilation it can wash out the co2 uh, uh, if a person is unconscious or if a person is not fit for bipap or he is not meeting the criteria for bipap or he is worsening with bipap so you have to use the ventilator now the second option over here is treat the underlying cause what are the underlying causes if it is a co2 you have to treat uh, so if it is a copd you have to treat that copd you have to give bronchodilators you have to give steroids uh, you have to give Uh, IV antibiotics and you have to give uh, aminophylline so you have to side by side treat the underlying cause and you have to side by side wash the CO2 so if it is acute exacerbation of asthma you have to treat that if it is opioid toxicity you have to treat that opioid toxicity of course you have to uh, give the naloxone and stuff like that if you if it is benzodiazepine poisoning you have to treat that <coughs> and uh, if you are having a gbs if it is a gbs or myasthenia gravis you have to treat that along with the wash out of the co2 if it is uh, obesity such as obstructive sleep apnea or obesity hypoventilation syndrome you have to treat that uh, if it is a kyphoscoliosis so you have along with wash out of co2 you have to treat that but if the cause is uh, untreatable let's for example say if a person is not fit for uh, surgery 
a person is having kyphoscoliosis or chest deformity but he is not fit for surgery so you have to use the bipap uh, lifelong if a person is not fit for surgery or weight reduction procedure so you have to use the bipap lifelong so if the cause is correctable correct that along with the washout of the co2 if the cause is not correctable you have to use this thing the bipap as a treatment for that because you cannot treat the cause that was all about the type 2 respiratory failure but uh, one thing i would mention over here is uh, isolated hypercapnia do you know what is meant by iatrogenic type 2 respiratory failure or iatrogenic hypercapnia or isolated hypercapnia that is the condition in which a person is at risk of type 2 respiratory failure and you give high oxygen let's for example say a person is having copd uh, and his respiratory rate is driven by hypoxia when you give high oxygen his hypoxic drive is diminished so what he what happens he is retaining co2 because his respiratory rate goes down his tidal volume goes down uh, similarly if a person is having stroke or bedridden uh, and he cannot wash the co2 and when you nebulize such patient with oxygen source is a matter of fact we do in our wards in er with the oxygen source we nebulize the patient what happens when you uh, nebulize the patient with oxygen source the, the the purpose of the nebulization is to deliver the the medicine through uh, uh, nebulization but what happens you are giving oxygen high flow oxygen with that now what happens that high flow oxygen causes co2 retention by decreasing respiratory rate hypoxic drive is diminished so in such cases you have to give control oxygen target should be 88 to 92% even in those patient who have not yet developed type 2 respiratory failure you have to give oxygen controlled you have to give controlled oxygen and you have to do nebulization with nebulizer machine you have to do nebulization with nebulizer machine any patient who is having a low gcs you should nebulize that patient with nebulizer machine unfortunately uh, we do nebulization with oxygen source and unfortunately the patient develop type type 2 failure and unfortunately we are uh, uh, repeating this again and again and then we are uh, running after by pap and the cpap machine after pulmonology ward uh, uh, and the cause is iatrogenic we are doing it we are doing it so you must be careful regarding the oxygen delivery in post operative patient in very uh, obese patient yes in very obese patient because their uh, ventilation is decreased due to uh, fat accumulation uh, obesity hypoventilation syndrome they develop obesity hypoventilation syndrome are a patient with obstructive sleep apnea syndrome you have to give controlled oxygen target is 88 to 92 percent post operative patient uh, any patient with abdominal distension you have to give control oxygen and you have to nebulize the patient uh, with nebulizer machine any patient of stroke because he or she cannot wash the co2 so leading to uh, co2 retention any patient with uh, sol brain inside the brain if there is uh, anything uh, if there is hematoma or if there is a mass so you have to give control oxygen the patient will retain the co2 now uh, most of the doctors they think that nrm non rebreather mask is a treatment for type 2 respiratory failure no that is not a treatment for type 2 respiratory failure that is a treatment for type 1 respiratory failure and that increases if i o2 uh, there is a detailed video on nrm i will not go into the detail of nrm so you can watch that video on my channel uh, how nrm helps in type 1 respiratory failure it does not help in type 2 respiratory failure it does not help in type 2 respiratory failure rather it aggravates accentuates the type 2 respiratory failure uh, you are giving more oxygen that converts into more co2 more co2 means co2 narcosis co2 narcosis mean by pap or ventilator uh, and the person uh, uh, we are having a limited resources so we must be careful uh, regarding the oxygen delivery thanks for watching please do subscribe my channel and, and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get notification of my new video